Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Uwe and it is such a pleasure to have you watch this video. On today's video, I want to talk about four things to know as a Christian that you are not doing God a favor for obeying him, but you are doing yourself a favor. Anything you do that God has commanded you to do, it is for your own good. You could even see from the standpoint of the Garden of Eden, where Adam was, God gave Adam a principle. God said to Adam, look, I've given you everything in this garden. The creator knows better than the creator. So man, being the creator, do not know so much about the environment he was made into. But the one who knows the impact of the things in the environment he made him into, gave him a principle to obey, to keep. And the principle was not given based up on, I am the one that made you, but for man's good. So he said, do not eat of this tree of good and evil for in the day you eat these are the consequence of eating from this tree you have a rather tree with good fruit to eat to choose from when god gives a command to you you don't keep that command so that you do him a favor but you keep it knowing that you are doing yourself a favor my first point god is not asking you to do anything to make him feel good but he is protecting you god is after your good everything god has kept and ordained is for your good he's not trying to tell you do this do that so that i will give you this so that i will feel good i am god you know make me feel good as god make me feel like god god doesn't need a man to feel like god to be god god doesn't need you to do a certain thing to make him be god which means if he admitted that then he would be so disappointed because there are a lot of people who are not even careful to do his will god doesn't need you to do something to make him feel good that's human nature that's on the horizontal plane where we dwell we might want people to do a certain thing to make us feel good or to, to make us accept them things that will be acceptable but in god's eyes that's not the same thing so god is not like a parent that would tell the child no you have to do this that and the third to make me as a father or mother proud of you before Jesus even started his ministry, the Bible says the Father spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So God was pleased in Jesus before he ever did one miracle. God was already pleased with him and called him beloved. You and I, for believing in Jesus, we are seen through the light of God's Son. We are not seen by who we are in the human nature that we carry, but we are seen through god sees us through christ jesus that is why our righteousness is not of our own it is through christ jesus we are righteous in god through jesus christ our savior so the bible says in ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 that he has made us accepted in the beloved the word there accepted is a very beautiful word highly favored which means we are beloved through Christ. God sees us as beloved people because of the beloved. We are accepted. We are highly favored in Christ the beloved. So you do not need to do a certain thing to make God proud of you. He's already proud of you. Now I'm keeping his word will not come and mean something like I'm keeping God's word. I'm obeying God to come and make him feel good. He's already proud of you. So now when you obey his commands, it is not to make him proud of you. There is nothing you can do to get God to feel good about you. God is already proud of you. So you need to know this as a Christian so that you will not do things being motivated wrongly or being wrongly inspired. Because now trying to get God to love you is a wrong motive. And in another way, God is not trying to act like the boss. Of course, he is the boss. <laughs> He's the boss of all of us. He's, he's the boss in charge. He's in control of everything. So if you would want to, you can act like the boss. But he's not trying to act like the boss and say, do this, I'm the boss. It will only be a religious voice that you hear that will tell you, if you don't do this, God will knock you on the head. We are no more in the law. We are under grace. We are in the new covenant. And God has never forced man to do anything. God only gives man what is right for him. He wants man to do that of his own choice. God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He won't force anybody. He will not force you to receive his blessings. He will not force you to do what he wants you to do, even though he wants you to do them. But he will let you know what is right for you. So God is not trying to get you to obey him or him to feel good. Instead, God is protecting you. He is after 
your protection, your protection from falling, your protection from messing up, your protection from destroying the good life he has purposed and designed for you. Point number two, there is a blessing attached to your obedience to God's word. There is always a blessing. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, faith realizes that God does what? God exists. That God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So there's no how you follow God and you, you serve God and you honor God, you believe in Jesus and you try to do all the right things that God will not bless you. And this kind of blessing is not like you have merited God's blessing because everything God has given us is not out of merit. We do not deserve any of the things that we have from God. By keeping God's word, you only align yourself to God's design so that you could key into the blessing that he has kept for you. Just like when the Bible says, I've kept an open door. If you don't walk into an open door that is open for you, God won't force you into it. If someone visits me in my house and I open the door, I won't drag the person in. It's the person's choice to walk into the open door that I've opened. God can keep an open door for you, but it's your obedience to his word that will open your eyes and create the path for you to align with God and enter into the open door, into the blessing that he has for you. It is all about God preparing you because by obeying his word, you are already in his design. So he prepares you to be able to handle the blessings he brings into your life. So just like the case of Joseph in Genesis, where Joseph was tempted to sin, Joseph only had an obsession to honor God. And that is what you can see in his statements. How can I do such wickedness to sin against God? What he said portrayed where his heart and his motive was. So Joseph was saying, my allegiance and my loyalty is first and foremost to God. What I value is his presence. What I value is honoring him. The obedience to God's words opens you up to receive the things that God has prepared. There's a blessing attached to your obedience to God's word, Joseph received that blessing in abundance. Point number three, you're not doing God a favor for obeying him because God doesn't owe you anything, but you owe him everything. Your whole life, the breath in your lungs, it all belongs to God. The Bible says God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. So the breath you carry is not only yours. The body you have is not yours. The Bible says for your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit in whom he dwells. You were bought with, with a price. You do not belong to you. You belong to God. So everything you have is not of you. So for you to obey God's word is not with a sense of entitlement. So when I obey God's word, now I'm entitled for God to bless me. Like some people would say in prayer, inadvertently say in prayers, God, I've sung for you, I've served you, I've done this, I've done that. No, now do this for me. It's not a transaction. It is a relationship that God called us, invited us into. God is not owing you anything. You owe him everything, everything. So the least you could do is to be grateful, not to feel entitled. The least you could do is to show gratitude, to show gratitude to God, not to feel entitled. I'm entitled to this blessing. I'm supposed to get this. I'm supposed to be in such a place. I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be there. No, you are supposed to be grateful. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be grateful that God has kept your life. You're supposed to be grateful that God has made your life beautiful, that God has given you the talent you have, that God has given you all the things that you can see in your life. Even though there are other things that you may not have, you once you are grateful to God for what he has given you, you align with him for him to trust your heart to give you more because he now sees you are humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and in due time he shall exalt you. Then cast your cares unto the Lord, for he cares for you. For you to even know that God cares for you, you must first of all have a heart to understand God's heart. So if you obey God's word, maybe by staying sexually pure, and you don't go into immorality. You cannot now come and say, God, now that I've stayed pure, I've stayed away from sex, I deserve a good wife. No, you don't deserve a good wife. A good wife is a gift from the Lord. That's what the scripture says. So if it's a gift from the Lord, it's not based on how much or what you've done to deserve it. You know, I once thought to myself that, okay, because I've tried to stay pure sexually, to try to obey God in this area, and try to have God help me live a life that honors him. Maybe because of this, God will give me a good wife. But at some point, God rebuked me in a holy way that 
a good wife is not a reward for you staying pure. Because that doesn't mean that if God gives me a good wife, I will know how to handle her because I stayed pure. I stayed sexually pure. Staying pure is God's, God's plan, which he has purposed in his plan that you don't get perverse in your mind. God is protecting you by you staying pure. Him telling you to stay pure and abstain from sexual immorality is not him trying to say, do this to deserve a good wife. It was him saying, I am protecting you from getting your mind perverse. I am protecting you from making miserable mistakes. I am protecting you from having your eyes clouded and your judgment clouded when you get into a relationship. Because getting into a relationship and you start having sex, a class of judgment because of the chemicals that are released, you can no more really do things out of sound judgment because now there's an entanglement created because of sex. Sex wasn't meant to be in a context, in a context where there's no commitment. Sex was meant to be in a container of marriage, which God designed it to be such that these people that have decided to become one, that sex will now be an harmonizer a symphony for them to become one, to help them entangle them together and join them together and bond them together. So by the time you stay sexually pure, for God to bring a good wife into your life, which you don't deserve it, it's not best of, of God have obeyed your word in this area. So now you can give me this. No, God bringing that to you. God, a good wife is a gift from the Lord, which means a gift from the Lord will only come. I can't give a gift to someone who cannot honor that gift or who will not be able to handle that gift. I will only give something to someone that I know that they will use it well to its whole potential. Not someone that maybe you bought a very good dress, nice dress to someone. And the next time you go to their house, they're using it to mop the floor. You'll be disappointed. So God knows our hearts. He knows how prepared we are. If we can handle the blessings he wants to pour into our lives. So by you staying pure, it's one of the ways that God is helping to prepare you to become a good spouse to whoever he will give you, he will give to you to live your life with. It's one of those ways, but it is not a way of life. I deserve it. God doesn't owe you that. So obedience to God's word is God positioning you in his design for you to be able to get the blessings that he has prepared for you. Like Ephesians says that God has recreated us in Christ Jesus to do the good works he has prepared beforehand for us to walk into. So God has plans and purposes that he already has prepared for us to walk into. But now he needs to prepare us to walk into those plans. My last point, which is the fourth point, sin is a counterfeit. Why do I have to bring this? Sometimes people feel like if I stay away from sin, I'm doing God a favor. No, you're not doing God a favor. God is protecting you. God is actually helping you. You are doing yourself a favor, not God. A counterfeit is something that imitates the original or the superior. So now sin comes in through the father of lies. Of course, you know, the devil is the father of lies. And it comes in as a deception to lure you to think that there is a solution that it eats. That sin is the solution to the problem you might be having. That that sin is a solution to some of the things, the emptiness you feel. Maybe drinking alcohol is a solution to the anxiety. Having sex with multiple people is a solution to this. Cheating on your spouse is a solution to this and that. Like it, the sin could present itself as something good. You can check out the last video I made of the devil presenting you with stones to turn into bread. So sin could present itself as something that is good, that is helpful. And out of deception, you may easily fall into that trap, not knowing that it will cost you more than you would want to pay. It will actually destroy you. But the devil is tricky. And that is why God wants to protect you. And when he says, do not do this, He's not saying do not do that for him to feel like God. He's already God, doesn't need you to be God. But he is doing that because he has your best interest at heart. God is good, but sin is a counterfeit. It will deceive you and lure you to lead you to your downfall. It like it makes you forfeit God's promise. It's a, sin is a counterfeit that will make you forfeit God's promises and blessings that he has prepared for you. So at this point, God is saying, look, I am here to have a relationship with you. I'm not here to do like a transaction. Stay away from this sin. 
then I will give you this. No, godliness is not a means to an end. Godliness with contentment is great gain. But you don't use godliness as a means to try to get God to do something for you. God knows your heart and the very motive of your heart. So you cannot use trying to stay away from a particular sin to go to God and tell God, I've stayed away from this. God, now please bring this into my life. Bring that into my life. Bring the third into my life. God will not do it. And that is why I believe that most people do not receive answers to their prayers because their motive and their reason for doing some of the things they do is wrong. It's not honorable to God. Sin is a counterfeit and it always will remain a counterfeit because the devil is a deceiver and is a liar, the father of lies. So you don't allow him to orchestrate this sin into your life. God is always in the business of trying to protect you, trying to keep you safe. He said to Jesus, all that I've kept before you, placed before you life and death. But choose life. He told, told them what to choose. God will not infringe on your choices. God will not override your choice. God will not do anything that you do not want him to do in your life. So sin is a counterfeit. It's for you to realize that, oh, this is a counterfeit. But God is the real thing. Sin is a counterfeit. Whatever sin it is, God is the real thing. So you have to go for what is real and leave what is counterfeit. You know, sin could promise you a lot of things like it could promise to fulfill you, it could promise to fill the void that you feel, the emptiness. It could promise you a lot of things, but all those are fake promises that are counterfeit. But God's promises are sure and they are amen in Jesus. They are yes and amen. So these are the four things for you to know as, as a Christian that God is doing you a favor. You are not doing him a favor. There are many other things which I might like you to share under the comment section let me hear from you it will be my greatest pleasure to hear from you and what you think about this video god bless you as a watch see you in the next video thank you so much